Hey, how's it going, guys? Miwa here, and I'm coming at you today with a Pokemon deck profile for Savali GX. And I do apologize that I've been posting anything recently. I've been away, been having to deal with other issues at the moment, but I should be back and posting more. And again, I do apologize for that. So. What I'm going to have for you today is just this Sylvia GX deck profile. I kind of had the idea for it. And the way I made it this time is a bit different. I haven't seen anyone else upload a deck profile similar. Or I guess I just haven't looked hard enough. <coughs> but this is this was just a little idea of mine. And it works amazingly. And yeah, let's get to it. So for the deck... You are playing three copies of Sylvalli GX, and Sylvalli GX has 210 HP. It is a normal type, so that's kind of sucky because you're getting hit with by weakness from Buzzwall. Um, he has no resistance and a retreat cost of two. He has two. Di he has. Three different attacks, well, two attacks and one ability. His first ability is Gyro Unit, is allows all your basics on, that you have in play to have no retreat cost, so it's just free retreat every time, which is really good if you're playing a lot of basic Pokemon. His second attack, Turbo Drive, hits for 120, which is a solid number as of right now, since we're in a format where a lot of stuff is either going to be two shotting. So, that's pretty decent right now, because you're two-shotting Zorark, you're two-shotting Lele. If you play any of his memories, you can actually one-shot Zorark if you if you like, because you can add a fighting memory and knock him out with just a single attack. So, that's good. And also, to be, the ability of Turbo Drive also allows you to attach a... Basic energy from the discard pile to one of your bench, so it accelerates energy for you, which is something that we need for this specific deck. And his Rebel GX attack allows you to do 50 damage for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So you have a potential, I think, what, 300 damage at most, or 250. So it's a good GX attack. And it's only 3 DC, 3 double, three colorless energies, which is not that hard to actually get on Silver Valley. So, 3 copies of film. You're playing 3 copies of Type Null. And you do play the Armor Press one because if you attach a DCE onto it, you can take 30 lift damage from it. And he has 110 HP, which is good. Um, re sadly, once Elm comes out. You won't be able to switch them out, so you'll be stuck having to play um, Fan Club if you want to get Type Null out. And this is post-rotation, guys, so no Sycamores, no Ends, no Bridgets, all that good stuff's gone. And next, we're playing three copies of Lapras, and this is what Silver Valley is going to be revolving around, Lapras GX. reason why is you attach a Choice Band onto Lapras, and you're doing 190, which is one-shotting anything like a Buzzwall, a Ultra Necrozma. You're one-shotting Lele's. Relatively anything that's 190 or less. So it's really good. Also, Collect lets you draw three cards, which is lets you accelerate through your deck. And has 190 HP, so it's pretty bulky for a basic and um it's gf attack is ice beam which is two watt two water and a colorless which does 100 damage and it leaves your opponent's active pokemon paralyzed so you're using sub valley to accelerate energy onto lab press and along with that you're dealing 120 damage so let's say if your sub valley already gets knocked out at least you dealt damage towards the Opponents active to where Lapras just comes and sweeps it up. And then we're playing two copies of Articuno GX, which is um which is good because it's Tapu Coco GX. If y'all know what that is, its ability is um when you play it from your hand onto your bench you can switch it with your active 
and move energies on from your field onto it and it just takes your it just takes the place where you're active which is really good and when you need to get that lapras out and you don't have um so valley out but other than that having so valley out on the field means free retreat for lapras so you can use blizzard burn retreat lapras throw in another lapras or go into so valley and just continue swinging you're playing the one copy of Tapu Fini GX, and only reason why is because of um, ta Tapu Storm, which is a really good attack. It shuffles your opponent's active Pokemon back into, into their deck. So, say if they're setting up a Pokemon, you can just Guzma it out, return that set up Pokemon back into their deck, and they have to go all over, so it resets them. And Aqua Ring does a good 20 damage, and then switches it out with the bench. And Hydro Shot is for two water and a colorless, and it discards two water engines from Tapu Fini and deals 120 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. So it allows for a snipe on the bench. If, for say, Sylvana GX can knock it out and they retreat it, you can just go into Tapu Fini, Hydro Shot it, knock it out, and done deal. And you're playing two copies of Tapu Lele GX. And you already know Tapu Lele. It's Wonder Tag, search your deck for any supporter, add it to your hand, and energy drive in case they have a Pokemon with a bunch of energies on it and you can just punish them for it. And next we're playing the one copy of Volcanian GX Prism Star, only for the Jet Geyser ability, which allows you to switch your opponent's active with one of their bench. So it gets rid of, it forces them to see what they want to throw out. And what you can just start damaging. <clears throat> so that's for the Pokemon lineup. Next we have the supporter lineup. And for supporters, like I said, this is post-rotation. So you're going to be playing four Cynthia's. Because it's one of your best draw supporters at the moment. Show for your hand and draw six from it. So that's really good. Next you're playing three Guzmas. And Guzma's just, y'all know what it is, it lets you switch your active Pokemon with one of your bench ones, and then force your, and then choose what you want your opponent to switch their active Pokemon with their bench. So it's really good. Next, you're playing two Titan Lizas. Um, I would actually recommend bumping this up to three, because Titan Lies is just really good at the moment, and it has two different abilities. One lets you switch your... One, switch your active Pokemon on your bench, and the other one is shuffle your hand into your deck and draw five. You can only choose one of, one of those abilities. But the whole shuffle to draw five is really good at the moment because we need as much draw supporters as we can. So three tank lights would be good. I'm playing two at the moment because I'm playing two lilies. And lilies is, um, you get to, if you play it on your first turn, you get to draw up to you have eight cards. But other than that, when you're playing it that's on the turn that's not your first turn, you're drawing up to six. So you can bump down the Lily and go for a um, a third Tate and Lysa if you like. But um, I am kind of liking how I have this right now. But I might just bump the Lily down to one and get a third Tate and Lysa on there. Next, you're playing two copies of Judge. And Judge is the description card. It's your new N. Since it allows you to... It allows both players to shuffle their hand into their deck. And each player draws four cards. So if you go first, this really can mess up your opponent from them going to se from seven or six cards to four cards. And it prevents them from trying to set up even more. So two copies of Judge. Next, you're playing two copies of Acerola. And Acerola is good just for the fact that you're playing Articuno GX. And if you can just bump Articuno GX back into your hand and have it switch into a different po go into a different Pokemon. Or just anything that has damage counters on it, just pop it back to your hand, deny your opponent prizes at this at this in this format is relatively good because it's slow. Is it stops them from getting prizes? It lets you keep a Pokemon that you might actually still need, and it's not that hard to set up a water Pokemon back out. Especially if you're if especially if you bump Articuno back to your hand, like if you have energies out on the field because of um. Tur um, turbo Drive from Slow Valley, <clears throat> you're always going to be able to get energies on Articuno right back. And last, you're playing two copies of Pokemon Fan Club only because we don't have Bridget. 
and fan clubs the next best best thing we have, which is search a deck for two poke for two Pokemon and add them to your hand. So, yeah. And next we're going on to items, and for items we we are playing four Ultra Balls, discard two cards, search a deck for a Pokemon. So that's actually pretty good if you want to um, search out your Articuno's or your Lele's. We're playing three copies of Choice Band, and Choice Band is really good because um, you're attaching them to Lapras, and Lapras will be able to one shot anything with 190 or less because of Choice Band. Um, there are really t- there are some decks that are going to be played at the moment where it's going to be less GX heavy, like um, you are seeing a lot of Shrine of Punishment decks right now going with Honchkrow and Tapu Koko. So decks like that, they're only going to be playing at most maybe a Tapu Lele. But other than that, those decks are going to have Honchkrow, they're going to have Tapu Koko in it, they're going to have baby Tapu Lele to move damage counters around, and a Lonely Muck. Because a Lonely Muck negates abilities of basic Pokemon in play, and it requires no items, so they have to be able to knock out that Lonely Muck if they want to play any abilities. So, yeah. Next, I'm playing three copies of Acrobike. It allows you to go through your deck more. And if you have a... And let's say you look at top two. You choose a Pokemon or an, another item. Send the water engine to the, to the graveyard. Then you set up your play for Aqua Patches, which is the next card we're playing three of. And Aqua Patch allows you to attach um, a water engine from your discard onto your Pokemon and onto your Pokemon on the bench that's a, that's a water Pokemon which is good it accelerates more energy for you which is what I said it's not that hard to get energies out because right now I think the only decks that can accelerate energy from the discard onto their bench will be Malamar decks and decks that are playing Aqua Patch at the moment and next we're playing two Brooklyn Hills it just allows you to search out for your Lapras or your Topofini. Only for those, really. So, that's the only reason why I play Brooklyn Hill. And last, I'm playing one copy of Rescue Stretcher, which just allows me to shuffle my water Pokemon back into my into my deck. Or if I need a certain Pokemon into my hand, I can just add it because of uh, Rescue Stretcher. And then for energies, you are playing eight waters and four DCEs, which is oh, where's my fourth one? No, there it goes. And four DCEs, yeah. And you're playing the DCEs because it helps on Silver Valley, and also if you have um, the DC, well, mainly you're only playing it for um, Silver Valley. So you, if you want, you can actually. Drop it down to three and add another water, but Silver Valley will kind of need it because you can't Aqua Patch onto Silver Valley. So being able to have the DCEs for Silver Valley and then attach one water energy onto him is actually pretty nice. But yeah, that's the deck. That's the deck profile for it, guys. It's playing relatively, relatively well. It's dealing good amounts of damage, and. Really, their only weakness would be right now against fighting, which is on what Savali is weak to. So Buzzwall can knock it out. And other than that, Lapras is weak to grass. So unless you're fighting against Decidueye Zorark, which I do see some people are actually playing more of, um, that would probably be the other thing that will knock out Lapras. Um, Topofini doesn't have a weakness, and neither does Lele. Um, Volcanion's weak to Lightning, and Articuno's weak to Steel. I would say your weakness is pretty spread out there. So, you can kind of like, avoid fighting certain, having certain Pokemon out due to weakness. So if you're going against like a Grass deck, so Badly can handle that for you by doing the damage for you, along with Articuno. Or if you're fighting a steel deck, so Valley and Lapras can handle that for you. Cause um 
let's see. C4GX is going to be seeing some play. I don't think it's going to be a top deck at the moment. Um, Ho-Ho's going to come out and he's going to demolish it. Because Ho-Ho's going to be relatively fast right, right now in this format. Um, along with Zygard. Zygard's doing really well this format right now. Zorark is still going to be up there because Zorark Zorark. And it, it helps a lot of decks. But other than that, you're not seeing much lightning in this so well actually it actually lightning won't even touch this deck in weakness it only the only thing that's weak to lightning in this deck would be um volcanium prism star so even when lightning comes out you'll be fine against that you'll be able to one shot zerora so yeah i would say this deck's pretty solid upon weakness you only gotta worry about buzzwall and um Caesar at most and sidui for arc well, also, um, what's, what's that card? Um, Tabu Bulu's making a comeback. But yeah, but you can get around it. And you can also, if it's really that much, you can switch out some items and add in fire memories. And so Valley just handles all that for you. But yeah, let me know what y'all think on the, on the deck profile. If you have any suggestions to make switches to it, um, let me know. But this was... This been fun. Again, I do apologize for not posting anything. I'll be posting more. I might actually post a um a steel deck next. So stay tuned for that. And this is me with signing out. So bye.